there's something that's happening in Ottawa that I don't really think is getting the attention that it needs that you need to be aware of because Justin Trudeau is forcing Canada's banks to do something that affects you. So I'm going to break down what Justin Trudeau is doing to force federal banks to do something that involves you. At the same time, I am going to point to an article that's about to be linked in the comments. Um, many of you know that Justin Trudeau's Bill C-18 and C-11, they prevent uh, a lot of news from being shared in Canada. You guys know that there's a lot of algorithms in social media that downgrade content like this. So if you click the link that's in the comments, I post almost everything that I talk about in, that, uh, in these articles on Substack. It's free to subscribe. I ask you to click subscribe because it allows me to directly communicate with you and skip Justin Trudeau's censorship ban. So the links in the comments, the best way you can help me out with these situations to get the word out, to stay informed is to click subscribe. It's free. It allows me to directly communicate with you. So what is Justin Trudeau doing with the banks? It all relates to the carbon tax. So many of you know that Justin Trudeau increased his very ineffective, very expensive carbon tax on April the 1st. Canadians across the country are now paying close to 20 cents per liter when you go to fill up the, at the pumps. It affects home heating bills, and it doesn't just affect what you're paying directly in carbon tax. It also pays what you're paying, affects what you're paying indirectly in carbon tax. You guys all know that a farmer who has to pay carbon tax to uh, grow food, uh, you're paying that carbon tax because it's you're paying for his cost or her cost. And then if a trucker is driving that food to the grocery store, who's paying the cost? It's you, right? So you're not just paying the carbon tax at the pumps, you're also paying the carbon tax indirectly. So what is Justin Trudeau doing with the banks? Justin Trudeau claims that you're getting more money from his government. So he's saying that he's going to take this money from you in the carbon tax and then give some of it back to you and that you should be happy for that, right? So this is why he keeps talking about this sort of wealth di distribution thing and he's trying to justify his carbon tax with this. But we all know that everything that he's been saying there has some big problems with it. In fact, the parliamentary budget officer, if you don't know who the parli budge parliamentary budget offer it, officer is, he's one of, you know, sort of Canada's top wa official nonpartisan watchdogs on government spending. He put out information that shows just how bunk that statement is. So I'll show you these tables here. Um, but again, if you click on the link in the comments, um, I try to post information like this all the time so you have it and that you can share it. So these are tables that show that not just this year, but also as the carbon tax increases under Justin Trudeau, he wants it to increase every, every year to exorbitant rates through 2030, that you're actually taking home, like you're, you're actually paying a lot more, just even in direct costs, than, uh, th than what Justin Trudeau is claiming you're getting back. So the parliamentary budget officer has proven this. He has shown this. Yet Justin Trudeau wants you to believe otherwise, even though we know that it's not true. And, and again, I want to reemphasize that this is just like the direct cost, right? You are paying more for everything because of the carbon tax, because it, it affects every part of Canadian life. And that's why it's so unpopular. But Justin Trudeau doesn't want you to think this. And here's what he's doing with the banks to try and fool you. Are you ready for this? Okay. Ottawa to force banks to call carbon rebate a carbon rebate in direct deposits. So Justin Trudeau, you know this guy, uh, Stephen Gibo, he's the environment minister. He's that guy that was arrested. I think he was scaling some tower in uh, somewhere in Canada. He's a, like a big, big, big lefty activist. He's now the environment minister. He's like the top advocate for the unpopular and costly carbon tax. They're actually forcing the banks to call it something. Now, Justin Trudeau is the first one to like talk about misinformation and disinformation and how bad that is. And yet you've got this story here, right? He's, they're actually forcing the banks. They're, they're actually legislating this, okay? But what you've got, in, like the proof, the proof is right here. You are paying far more 
than what Justin Trudeau gives back to you. Far more, right? For those of you who are in Ontario and Quebec, you saw a huge spike at the pumps this week, right? Um, the reality is, is that every Canadian is paying close to 20 cents a litre due to Justin Trudeau's carbon tax. And it's only going to increase year after year after year, right? So it's so important to get the word out that Justin Trudeau is so dogmatically attached to this bad policy, which even the liberal premier of Newfoundland and New Brunswick, he's a liberal. And he said, this is a bad policy after he lost a by-election this last week. And a lot of people were speculating it was because of Justin Trudeau's carbon tax. Even, even that guy is saying it's a bad policy. Everybody's saying it's a bad policy. And, and why? Because it's not, it's not materially reducing Canada's greenhouse gas emissions, right? Many of you know, like, many of you know this, like, do you think Justin Trudeau's government has magically built out a bunch of infrastructure that negates the need for us to drive around or negates the need for road and cars and trucks to grow our food or take our food to market? No, of course, of course they haven't. Or heat our homes, right? They haven't thought about that. They haven't thought about that whole need for substitute good things. And worse, they've made life so unaffordable in every, any other way that, you know, let's say you did want to make your home more energy efficient or buy a different type of car. A lot of people in Canada can't afford anything like that. Why? Because inflation, because of Justin Trudeau's debt spending, deficit spending that leads to more debt, has made life super unaffordable. It's caused an inf inflation crisis in Canada. And this, do you think that this makes life more affordable? Of course not. So it's just, it's such a bad policy. It's such bad policy. And the only way that Trudeau, Trudeau is so doubling down on this, that he's forcing the banks to kind of take the message that even the, the parliamentary budget officer has said is bonk, right? Like these numbers speak for themselves. I don't need to show you these numbers though, right? I don't need to show you these numbers because you all know how much you are paying for this. I just finished question period. Um, I, I asked about some of these things in the House of Commons today, and one of the Liberals was like, well, I, I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to listen to the constituents. I'm going to listen to these Liberal economists. You know, and that's the problem with this government, is they're not listening to you, right? But what they are going to do is try to force you to listen by legislating that the banks be part of this whole shenanigan system. And that's just like, can you imagine? They're actually using the resources of the House of Commons to legislate this instead of doing what? Axing the tax, which is what we have been trying to, to do for, for, for months and months and months. We even just tried to force a non-confidence motion due to oh, over this. And of course the Liberals and the NDP uh, prevented that from happening. So it's really important that you share this video. It's really important that you click on the links in, in the comments. If you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be in the video description as well. Um, please click on that and please click subscribe because it allows you to direct allows me to directly communicate with you to give you information like this about a bunch of other topics that I'm seeing in Ottawa that you might not be aware of, but you need to understand what's happening. This is why Justin Trudeau, I think, this is why he passed Bill C-11 and C-18. He wanted you to have less information, right? He wants less scrutiny on his government because they do crazy things like this. And this affects you, right? They, he, they're basically legislating that the banks tell you something. Well, let me tell you something that you already know. The carbon tax is ineffective, it's expensive, and it's making life more affordable, unaffordable, and it needs to go. So share this video, click subscri subscribe on the link in the comments, help me get the word out. And just know that like we are doing everything as the Conservative Party of Canada to force the issue. I will say this, there's hope. We've seen like liberal premiers say that the tax needs to go. Um, and just millions of Canadians are saying it's, you know, it's, it's not a good thing. So it feels like the political winds are changing in Canada, but we cannot take our foot off the gas pedal, metaphorically speaking. We do need to make sure that Canadians understand just how bad this is. And more importantly, the lengths that Justin Trudeau is going to go to to try to fool you about this policy. Working hard for you in Ottawa. Have a great day.